Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today we're going to try and fix up a Sega Mega Drive. So these are known in America as Sega Genesis. I bought them off eBay as spares or repair from a business seller. There was no other information and they were sold for £10 each but that was without any controllers, adapters or cables. So when I've plugged them in, this one is hit and miss whether it brings up anything on the screen. Sometimes it's just like the uh, the static that you get on a TV when it's not tuned in. This one here comes up with a black screen, but yet it won't play certain games. So for example, it won't play this uh, Micro Machines game. It also won't play this game here, which has numerous games on it. Yet it will play Mickey Mouse and Golden Axe. Now, a few times when I have got this to work, same thing, it will play Mickey Mouse, but it won't play this Micro Machines game. Really, really strange. So I'm wondering whether this is using more pins, because maybe it's a more complicated game, and possibly these have those pins faulty? I'm not too sure what's going on, but uh, rather than decide which one I'm gonna fix in this video, I'm gonna let the electric derby take the decisions out of my life, and whichever one this one says to fix, we will fix, a bit like a magic eight ball. So I'm not gonna do them both in the one video because my videos are already long enough. So this is gonna be evens, this is gonna be odds. This is one to six, if it lands on two, four, or six, we're gonna do this one. If it lands on one, three, or five, we're gonna do this one. So let's turn it on and give it a big spin. Four. So we're going to be doing this one here. So let me show you the problem with it. Turn this one off and plug it in. Now watch this. Take this cart out, put it in here. It will come up with the black screen. Right now it's not coming up with any screen. Right, let's uh, sort those cables out. Nope. There we go. Right, we've got a black screen now, so it looks like the connection at the back is a bit iffy as well. But look, have a look. Reset. It's not coming on. Turn off. Turn on. Not doing anything. But yet, if I was to go to Mickey Mouse, it will load. See? There you go. It's come up there. Yeah, once upon a mouse. So, if I was to uh, try this one here, this one won't load either. And yet there's nothing wrong with that game. That was fixed in a different video. Strange, isn't it? So let's get it over to the blue mat, take it apart, and see if we can find out why it's only playing some games and not other games. So let's tear into this thing. It looks nice and straightforward. There's just six screws at the back here. And if you have a look here, the model number is exactly the same as my working Mega Drive. So 1601-05, and it says Mega Drive PAL I. So while we're opening this up, let's give a shout out to the exclusive group known as the My Mate Vince Massive. And this month that is Saturnine Cinema, Operational 117, KipDigital.com, Kip Hakes, Max Rokotansky, and Having Fun Repairs. What well, is interesting, look here, we've got a weird, uh, a weird kind of uh, slot here, it says do not remove. And on the other Mega Drive that I'm not doing in this video, it's got an extension port out the back here, which I haven't seen before. So yeah, massive thanks to the My Mate Vince Massive and all the guys over on Patreon that support these, uh, these videos. Here we go. Oh, it comes off from the top. Well, I haven't taken one of these apart before. Ooh, hold on, hold on. I haven't taken one of these apart before, to my knowledge, anyway. Right, that's just the LED for the light. There's a little connection here. So let's just unplug that. Can you unplug it? No. Maybe from the top you can. No, that looks like it's soldered in both ways. How weird. Very strange. Okay, not such a hardship anyway. Right, I can see that there's a nice bit of dust on here. I'm wondering if all this is just to do with dirty cart slot. Let's strip it down a little bit more just out of curiosity to have a look at the board. So even though they have these flaps on, there is a gap there. So I suppose dust is still gonna go through there after year after year after year. Well, these screws are longer at the side here. 
Also, we have this red gloopy stuff, so I might not be able to take this off. They might be some sort of tuning screws or something under that for the RF, maybe. Right, we have got a screw up here with red glue on it. I hope this isn't doesn't affect anything. There we go. Right, that screw... Oh, it just went into there, so that's not going to affect anything. Maybe that's just uh, some sort of weird warranty thing to see if it's been taken apart. Okay, now, what do we have going on here? Oh, a little mod thing's gone on here. There's a little resistor in place on this leg. Let's zoom in there and show you that. Look. Right. Ah, uh, okay. What else? Does this look a little bit weird here? Bit of food or something on there. I think... I think I'm just going to clean everything up. So clean on the, the on and off switch because even... even uh, we're saying that it wasn't given a display. That's not going to be the on and off switch. I'm going to clean these switches here, the volume, the on and off. I'm going to clean the RF out at the back, and I'm going to give this port here a particularly good clean. Let's just undo it and see what happens. I presume it's just soldered right the way through to the bottom. Yeah, that's going to be soldered through to the bottom. How easy is this to take apart? Right, so we have a little screw here holding it in. Oh, here we go. Here we go. All right, cart slot is this one here going across here. Now I'm just going to see if any of those look broken. No, in my opinion, they look fine. I can see a little bit of weird corrosion stuff here, and that corresponds to this part here on the board. Just looks like a little bit of leakage through that hole at the back, just here. But that's not going to cause any problems, is it? Right, let's give everything a clean. I don't think there's anything really wrong with this. I think the pins are just not making a contact on some, on some of them. So I'm going to get some IPA, give everything a real good scrub. So I'm going to be using isopropyl alcohol. Well, I'm going to get a little bit of deoxit to put in the switches down here. Here we go, the miracle stuff that I'm not sponsored by, but I mention in every other video. Not sure whether that's actually going to work its way in there or not, there's not much of a gap. Well, let's plug it back in and see if it's going to make any difference. Plug in the micro machines again. Turn it on. Lights on. Nothing's happening on the TV. Well, we're not even getting the black screen now. I wonder if that RF connection is a bit iffy. Uh, right, okay, so it's doing less than it did before. I am going to, let's just try Mickey Mouse again. 
No, see, it's not even displaying anything on the TV now. I'm going to clean up that RF port because it's it seems a bit loose and I don't know if it's making contact so what we'll do is let's take this out from the TV and then we could just do a continuity test see if it's going into the RF actual port on the Mega Drive because it did this a few times before as well but when I wiggled the back it started working yeah it's definitely not happy I'm just going to try to prise off the lid of this RF thing here we go. Well, I'm assuming that that massive thing there is going to be the middle pin. So let's plug this back in. And let's see if we are actually getting a connection. So we've got it on the right RF there. So we should have continuity from that middle pin to that big pin there. Yes, we do. But we have it coming up everywhere. Hold on a minute. Let's take that out. Yeah, look at that. Unless that's not the middle pin. One second now. What's going on? What is going on there? It's held down, these three pins are feeding it, but I don't think there should be anything else underneath it. I oh, mind you, it's soldered on here. I kind of need to get into, I need to get into this to see what's going on. I need to get under this board here. This isn't gonna fix the problem of the game's not working, but this is right now why it's not displaying. Because we've got a short against them both. And if we compare that to my one, I'm hoping on this one it won't do that. Oh, it is doing that. What? Well, how wrong am I? Okay. Well, luckily I had a working one to uh, to do there. So maybe it's just the fact that this is a little bit kind of tarnished around the edge here, and maybe by putting IPA on it. I've uh, kind of made it more slippery and, and made the connection even worse. So I'm just gonna scrape it back a bit to try to get it a little bit back to uh, shiny metal. And if it works, I can always do it with sandpaper afterwards. So weird, I didn't think that that in, inner one and outer one would be shorting because it was coming up with just over one ohm, which is like a direct short, isn't it? Right, let's see if that makes any difference. Okay, so it's just behaving like it was before. So at least when I originally had it, I'd get the game loading up. I mean, the odd time it would go to this screen, but then other times it would go to the black screen. Now, consistently, every time I do this, it just goes to that. Now, what's interesting is whether the game's in it or not, it has the same behavior. So it's on now, and you can see just fuzz on the screen. If I was to turn it off here, the fuzz changes slightly, like that. Turn it on, it goes to that, and the light's on there. Yet, if I was to turn this one, the working one, on without a game in it, then I still get the black screen. See? So I think the problem with this one, I think there's two problems. There's definitely, well, not definitely, but I'm pretty sure there's something wrong with the game cart slot or something relating to feeding the slot. But there's also a problem with the display as well, which is, uh, which is strange. Not too sure where to take this one from here. I'm going to take the board out again and have a good close look. I'm going to have a look around the power switch just in case it's not just like on and off. It might go off to different directions and maybe the contacts go dirty go into to one of them. You know what I mean? Maybe it turns on three tracks at once and maybe one of the tracks is dirty or something. Strange. Right, let's have a look at this switch here. So what we got around about here 
which looks like there's three contacts, doesn't there? Well, I mean, we know the switch itself is working, unless the reset switch or something is staying on. Right, so it's on that way. Now let's flip it. No, it's on that way, so I think that is going to be all right. Where does it go to over here? Yeah, there we go. So, on, off. So it's not going off in loads of different directions. Right, I don't think there's anything to do with that. Let's see if there's anything happening with this reset switch. Right, so they're the same, so it should be livening up these ones here, from here to here, when you press it. And it's not. Well, well that reset switch doesn't seem to be doing anything. I wonder if that was faulty, would that stop it from... If it was constantly... Well, mind you, it's not on, is it? It's just not resetting. that not working? That's just a little carbon track in the middle. That should work. Well, I'm going to have to unsolder that to get that back in. But anyway, let's see now. Let's just pull it out completely. Let's see now if I press down on that whether it is actually working or not. Why is that not working? Yeah, that's not working, definitely not. So it needed work anyway. Let's see if we're getting any resistance reading. Here we are. Well, anyway, that's that's not going to cause any problem. It's not exactly. It wasn't forced on, was it? It was just it's just off constantly. So that's not going to affect it. I think. I think what I need to do is I need to determine why it's not displaying because that's the main problem at this moment in time. So I'm going to look up the pinout for this AV out connector here. And then I'm just going to connect up some AV wires to here and then see that will eliminate the whole RF thing. And then we can concentrate on whether or not this card thing is reading correctly here or not. Because if it's not displaying, if it's displaying on AV, then maybe I could just concentrate on this for the time being. If it's not displaying on AV, then there's a reason why it's not displaying. And then we can take it a little bit further. I've got my phono jack here, my RCA lead. I'm not going to worry about audio for the time being. I just want to get a picture. Apparently, I need to go onto this little one here. And also this, I think it was the, I'm not sure if it was the white or red one. Let's have a little look. So this is the red one. Let's see if that's going to the middle pin. Yeah, that is the... Uh, well, actually, this might be negative. Hold on a minute. I don't know if this is uh, center pin positive or negative. Oh, interesting. Right, this is center pin. This is center pin negative. So I actually need to go onto the white one here because that will bring me onto the center pin here. So I need to go onto that one there. So all I'm going to be doing is chopping one of the ends off the leads off and just bodging up quickly. I'm not worried about audio at this moment in time. Right, to save having all that flapping around the board, I'll cut that one short and leave the insulated one long. So let's just tin that up. Yeah. 
and pop that onto that bottom one there. Like so. And let's tin that little one up. Right, there we go, and hopefully now that will eliminate the RF completely. So let's just pop it back together and see if we're getting anything on the TV now. Okay, so I've just got my uh, power connector in the back. This plugged into just the yellow AV port on the TV. Uh, let's, uh, let's try Mickey Mouse. Turn it on. Excellent. Brilliant. Okay. Oh, such a the picture so much better as well right okay so we're back to where we were at the beginning apart from it's not on RF so now let's see if Micro Machines is playing yeah that's definitely working now obviously we haven't got any audio because I haven't run those cables yet yeah, but that's definitely working right okay now let's see if Micro Machines is working turn it on there we go fantastic oh hold on is it going to do more it came up with the beginning bit. No, it's still struggling. Can't do a reset because the thing's not in there. Let's try it again. I'm going to turn it on now. So it comes up with that. But it's not going further, so we still have an issue with that. Let's try this game here. No, so it's still not happy with those games. Oh, this is really weird. I looked up about that resistor as well, and that's a mod from the factory on the early models. But I think the earliest mod, well, I could be wrong, but look, that hasn't got any extension port at the back. But you know this other one that I got that has got an extension port at the back here? I think that might be the, uh, the earlier one again. Right, so we are back to where we were. Let's just see if Golden Axe is working which is where it works on some games but not others. Weird how the RF's not working. Could it be as simple as that I took off all the metal shield? And by taking off the metal shield, I've put more noise into it and uh, it's just it's just knocking it out. But you can see it's working there. So now, why are those games working and the Micro Machines not? Right, I tried one more thing because all, all things point towards this, doesn't it, the actual uh, cartridge, and check this out. If I lift it up while turning it on like that, it works. So look, lift it up, turn it on. And give it a few seconds. There you go. So it's uh, nothing to do with chips or anything like that. It is just the cartridge slot itself. There you go. And now if I let go, is it going to work? Oh, it stays working. Right, okay, let's undo that one. And now let's do the same with Micro Machines. Lift it up like that. Turn it on. Still holding it up. Is that going to do it? No, let's turn it off. Back on again. No, and then I lifted it up a bit like that. Turned it on, and it came on. There you go. You can see now lifting it up. So I just need to mess around with the pins and see if some of them look bent or damaged or anything. Well, we know they're not damaged, but see if they look bent or anything, or see, zoom right in, see if we've got any corrosion on them. And then I think this might be fixed. I mean, I can look at the RF thing, but AV gives a much better picture anyway. All you have to do is get that DIN cable that goes out the back. So uh, yeah, I don't know if I'm going to mess around with the RF too much. It could be as simple as putting the shield back on will make it work. So putting the game in, and uh, lifting it up makes it work. Let's zoom right in on these contacts, see if we can see what's happening. Right, they all look okay and nice and close, but maybe I can make them closer to each other. 
know what? Could it just be that they bowed out a little bit? To me, they look perfect. Let's see how easy they are just to uh, ease out a tiny bit. Got a little needle here. Is it possible to ease them out? Yes, it is. Right, so they're locked in there, so they're kind of on a spring. But these are not on a spring, are they? So if I was to go that side and that side, then that's just going to push them out a little bit. Then I can go, for example, the other side. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. It's going to take a while, but I think maybe they've just... Because the solder looks fine underneath. I know I need to put the screws back in. I think maybe the socket itself has just got maybe a fraction of a millimetre wide in some places. I mean, it could be to do with a slight bit of corrosion, but I have scraped metal against metal, which you think would have cleaned it up. Maybe without seeing them, maybe some of them are just pushed in ever so slightly more. Right, so you can see what I'm going to do. This is probably going to take a good 20 minutes or so, but I'm just going in there, opening it up. Not much. And going in here and opening it up. And then I'm going to do the same here. So I'll be back when it's done. Right, it's only taken about three or four minutes. I've been a bit more brutal with it, so I'm just doing it on each side, just going along like that until they hit each other. But I need to make sure now that none of them have shorted against each other. So now if we get our meter and go to continuity, if I was to put one probe for example here it shouldn't be short into here yeah but you can see it shorts to here yeah but not that side and likewise yeah right so we need to push that back a little bit it's okay remember as the game goes in a few times as the game goes in a few times it's going to uh it's going to separate them back anyway. Right, so that's shorting. Unless it's supposed to. Hold on, one second. No, it shouldn't be shorting. It seems to be shorting awful easy. There you go, it's okay now. Yeah, the rest appear to be okay. Do you know what, looking at it, they're much closer on this side, aren't they? Look at them there. You can see, and this is just a trick of the light, you can see they're almost touching. Yet look at the gap over this side. That's our problem. Look. There's a huge gap there. And this side. There's not. That's what it is. It's not gripping properly over this side. So I reckon there's a few pins that Micro Machines and that other game are using on somewhere over this side, which the Mickey Mouse and Golden Axe are not using. So I'm not quite sure why it got spread out on this side here. So I'm going to be a lot more extreme over here.
Right, that's brought them more in line now, hasn't it? Yeah. Right, let's see if these are... Tell you what we'll do, let's stick a game in a few times and then we'll... Now let's check them for shorts. Now, don't know about you, but does that look wide again there? Maybe not. Oh, I'm going to test that again now. Okay, I'm on the correct channel. On, on. Come on, work this time. Brilliant, there you go. Now, was that just a fluke? Let's turn it off, take it out, put it back in again, turn it on. Brilliant, it's gone nice and quick. I think when it goes off quick, it's gonna work. Right, so that's that one there. Let's just make sure it goes to the next stage. Yeah. Well, let's uh, try this other game. Definitely feels stiffer getting the game out. That's this multi game here. There we go, brilliant. So now, what was wrong there? It was just a faulty car and possibly something wrong with the RF. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the shield back on and stuff and then let's see if the RF starts working. As I say, I'm not gonna spend hours on it. Annoyingly, I do have to work on this reset switch because now that I've taken that rubber out, there's no way that rubber's going back in because it needs to go into a like, little groove thing on it. So I'm hoping if I unsolder it, a kind of cap will come off, but I'm, I'm not sure. I might have ruined that uh, reset switch completely. Let's have a close look at it. So I used the solder sucker and I took off that little reset switch because I thought it was going to come apart in two parts to allow me to get the rubber conductive thing back in. But it made no difference. There was no need to take it off because it's completely sealed. This whole thing with the rubber thing is sealed, whoever manufactured it, and it's just placed onto the board in one piece. So... I had to solder it back on and then force up the plastic with a little pry tool, force the rubber into the tiny little groove and then try to fold the plastic back down. And then I just used the soldering iron at the end to go around the top to kind of seal it back in place. I think it's gonna do what it needs to do. Obviously it's not as good as before I started, but I was expecting to see continuity. In other words, my meter beep when I was going across it because that's what normally happens on a switch. But this carbon little dot in the middle was tiny. And as you've seen earlier when I'm measuring it, the uh, the resistance across it was about, I don't know, whatever it was, four or 500 ohms. So now when I put it back together and go across the contacts, it's still measuring four or 500 ohms. So I think that's exactly what it's supposed to measure. I was expecting the continuity meter to beep, which is anything below 50 ohms on my meter, but it wasn't the case. So in hindsight, and hindsight is always a great thing, everybody's wise and clever with hindsight, I shouldn't have taken that switch off. But, I, well, yeah, I just shouldn't have <laughs> because there was nothing wrong with it. But because it wasn't beeping on my meter, I thought it was faulty. That is definitely not the case. So as you can see now, it's soldered back on. Let's get back to the video. So I think that's gonna be fine. Just give it a clean. Well, I'm going to unsolder this little mod that I did for the time being and go back to RF and see if that uh, see if that's now working. I'm going to give it a quick wipe down with a wet wipe. There we go, well it's come up really nice, but let's see if the reset button's working and let's see if the RF is now working that we have the shield back on. Right, so just the RF cables plugged in the back now and the power cable, so no AV. Let's put it to 
analog TV. And here we go, turn it on. I've got micro machines in. Oh yes, there it goes, and we've got a picture. Fantastic, look at that straight away. Brilliant. Right, let's see if the reset button works. So let's just load up a little bit more. So it looks like you need the shield then for the RF. But you can see how much loss there is on this cable. See, this is a very thin, cheap cable. Really, I should just get a little phono adapter there and then use one of my thicker, nice copper. Uh, I could do that, actually. I might try that just to see if I get a bit better picture on this TV. Anyway, let's see if the reset works. Yay! There we go. And again. Well, this looks like it's fully working. Let me see if I can swap that lead over. Well, I've changed the cable over to a nice thick cable, but it still looks awful. For some reason, RF on this TV just doesn't look good. So if I was to go onto another TV in the house, this would look uh, a lot better, which is, which is strange. But anyway, you've seen it working on AV perfectly. And this is the same picture quality as my Mega Drive there. So I'm... Uh, I'm sure that this one here is now working fine. So let's just end this video with a tiny bit of gameplay. And I think when it comes to that Mega Drive there, I think I know exactly what I'm going to do. It's got a black screen with uh, not loading up some of the games. So I'm almost certain it's going to be just a pin problem. So we'll do that on uh, another video. That one I'm pretty sure will only be a short video because all I'm going to do is clean it up, clean up all the switches and then just use a needle, move those little pins out again and hopefully it will work. Right, let's just end on a little bit of gameplay. So once I get them off the screen, I've won that point. And if they get me off the screen, they win the point. There we go. And just quickly, let's turn it off and let's just try this game that wasn't working earlier. This is Golden Axe. So there we have it. So what a nice, easy enough fix. I made it more complicated because it was my first time in there, but now I know in future, if there's just a black screen, there's a high chance that it could be something to do with the cartridge slot there, either corroded or maybe the pins underneath not soldered properly or a cold solder joint maybe from putting too much pressure down or lifting up, it might have broken them. Or in this instance here, the pins being bent. And I think that happens when maybe it's kind of pushed in at an angle and stuff like that. Maybe over hundreds and hundreds of goes of doing that, it spreads the pins apart. So yeah, nice little, uh, nice little fix. Happy with this. And I think worth every penny of £10. If you enjoyed it, give it a big thumbs up. Take care. Bye now.